I'm Troy Starley. I work in the equipment operations. I've been with UDOT over 20 years now. But we, we want to start with a little overview of, uh, of washing the plow trucks off and the equipment. There's two different types of wash we consider. There's the high pressure wash that a lot of guys will use outside with the, the fire hoses and whatnot. And then we have the, our low pressure we consider garden hoses or uh, pressure washers on, on turn down so we're not at a high pressure direct spray. When the vehicles, when we bring them in and wash them, a lot of guys are gonna come into the yard and they're gonna spend time out, outside washing them off with the high pressure, the big fire hoses and whatnot. That's a great idea to do. It gets the majority of the salt and icing off the vehicles. Another thing, make sure that you're washing your trucks in designated wash areas for your facility so that the wash water is entering the sanitary sewer system for retention ponds. Wash water cannot flow offside or into your storm drain system. Washing these trucks should take anywhere from 45 minutes to a good hour. That should be a good quality wash job. Uh, wash them off outside, bring them into the shops, and let's uh, spend the time and wash them off. Um, as I always said, it doesn't matter what color the outside of the vehicle is if we don't wash the heart and the mechanicals of it, meaning we need to wash the engines, transmissions, and stuff. That all comes with the low pressure wash when we get back in the shops. We'll start basically from the cab and do a walk around clockwise, pointing out the critical components of the vehicle and what we expect to be washed. One of the main things we do is when we pull up, we wanna make sure the truck's in neutral, park brake set, lock the tires if necessary. Make sure the truck is turned off and it's cooled down before we proceed to do any of this washing. Leaving the engine running with electronics, it's going to cause us major grief, so please turn them off. With the cab, we want you to take and clean out all the garbage, the trash, your soda cans, your leftover uh, chip bags, whatever. Clean all the debris and the garbage out, and then wipe the vehicle down internally. Take a damp rag, wipe the floorboards out, wipe any excessive salt. If you got floor mats, take them out, wash them off, let's dry it out, make it nice and clean inside. When we step outside the cab, we're going to step out and uh, proceed to the engine bay. Open the hood, prop them up with the safety props and stuff, and then starting on the, the driver's side of the vehicle, on the inside frame rails, using your low pressure garden hoses and whatnot, you're going to wash out around the starter motor area. It's below the frame rail, back towards the transmission area. Let's wash that off. There's an ECM, which is the computer for the engine, right ahead of them. You want to wash all that off, and you've got your starter or your alternators and stuff. Go back to washing the engine off, spray off the, the engine itself, the firewall area below the windshield. Wash all that area off. While you're in that area, reach inside underneath the cab there on the transmission. Wash the top of the transmission area off the best you can. If you need to, let the water flow for several minutes, washing the top off down below it. Proceed back up front, behind the wheels, wash off your brake, brake can, slack adjusters, all your steering components. Rinse all that off, get as much salt off as you can. Move forward up towards the radiator area. Using very low pressure on there, you want to rinse the radiators off. One thing you don't want to do is to fold the cooling fins over on the radiators. So just rinse it off with low water, such as a garden hose. Get that all washed off, fan area, fan shroud. Move back out, you've got all your wiring and stuff around your headlights and your inside of your hood. Rinse all that off with low pressure. Get as much salt off the wiring as possible. That's a major spot. If the lights don't work, you're not gonna be able to see how to do your job. Move around to the front of the cab. Lower the hood if you need to. You've got your hydraulic pumps. 
the front of the hitch assemblies wash all that off real well get that off you can wash the front of the radiator again with low pressure once you're done there proceed around to the right side front of the engine bay rinse off all your brake areas again your s cam slack adjusters inside the brakes if possible steering components all of that needs to be washed off you've got your, your engine side of that wash the turbos exhaust manifolds rinse all that off at that point you can reach back under and rinse off the other side of the transmission if you can reach it put the hose in there let it run for several minutes flooding the transmission down move them back underneath the passenger's door the compartment all of our new trucks nowadays have what they call a dpf a diesel particulate filter it's a very expensive item it needs to be maintained and washed put the garden hose in there rinse it off really well a lot of times that's a hot component so the salt's going to bake on it take your time wash that area off as long as you need to from there you're going to move backwards towards the rear of the truck when you push underneath that truck you're going to raise the bed up make sure the bed props are installed never get under a, a raised bed it's a major safety violation and we don't want to see anybody hurt on our older trucks you're going to come in contact with the hydraulic valve box the newer trucks will be on the driver's side behind the cab take the lid off run your garden hose in there please do not use high pressure in there rinse all that salt and debris out of those boxes take your time wash them out it's a very expensive component it needs to be clean take the lid set it aside let the box dry out when you're all done with the truck put the lids back on proceed back you're going to come to the differential areas wash them differential areas out very well salt sits on top of the diffs you want to rinse both of them off Pay attention to your your brake chambers, your S cam slack adjusters, all your brake components back there. Wash all of that off. Take your time. Inside your frame rails while you're there, you want to wash all that off with low pressure water. You don't want to use high pressure. You've got vital electric valves and brake components and all. Please don't hit them with high pressure water. It causes a lot of grief and you'll have more downtime. Proceed around to the rear of the truck. You get to the rear of the truck. Wash off all your tail light areas inside the spreader. You're going to come. You're going to wash up inside the spreader. Wash the top. A lot of this might have been done outside with your high pressure fire hose. Any residual salt, wash it off. Rinse off your spinners, your, your uh, white lights, spinner lights, whatever you've got, rotor beams. Open up your pre-wet boxes. Open that up. Wash those out. They always have salt and contaminants in there rinse them out give them time to dry before you close it up proceed around wash off the butt plates uh, the under hitch there all your hydraulic area your components all that at the rear of the frame rinse that off real well we all know that's going to collect a lot of salt and it's going to sit there there's vital electrical junction boxes in there they all need to be cleaned off and washed proceed to the, the driver side rear same thing goes as a passenger you want to wash off all your brakes on top of the differentials inside the frame rails whatever you need to do proceed to wash all that off if your truck has a tag axle same thing goes there you want to just spend time wash off all your brakes has cam slack adjusters steering components rinse all that off your airbags valves just take care of all of that moving forward you're going to come up you're going to find battery boxes same deal with battery box remove the lid Take it off, wash the insides out, rinse all that salt out of inside. And then when you're done, go ahead and just leave the lids off, let it dry off, and then remember to put it all back together before you uh, go out on your next run. After removing the covers for the hydraulic covers and the, the battery boxes, it's a good idea not to put them underneath the vehicle. If you're going to take them off, take them, put them to the side of the truck, maybe around by the driver's door somewhere. So that when you're getting back in you realize they're not on and you don't back over them so put them out to the side so that you remember to put them back on so one of the major things that we want to do after the washing of the truck is uh, it's very important is to go ahead and grease the truck afterwards we want to take and purge all of that salt water and contaminants out of any of our uh, vital uh, moving parts so just take another 
45 minutes to an hour and wash and grease that truck purge all that con contaminants out of the system and uh, we should have a good working truck when we're ready to use it there's also another grease video available in this course so in closing the, m the main idea of washing these trucks is to make sure that they're clean ready ready to go for the next event as we're washing the trucks one of the big aspects of it is, is we, we want to wash them for the cleanliness of it but we also uh, look for repairs that's a great time to be walking around the truck and looking for any uh, deficiencies in the truck and report those to your supervisor you know he, at that point that's when we want to know so we can tell the mechanics to come out and repair them we don't want to know about it the, the, when the stove's hitting the ground and we're, you need the truck the most we want to know it now that's the best time so go ahead and uh, report any deficiencies uh, one of the big points of making sure that the vehicle is clean is, uh, you know, not only is it you that you're looking after, is the next guy that gets in that truck. That truck, you might be getting out of it. Make sure it's clean for the next guy that's got to get into that truck so he has something clean to get into. Making sure that it's safe, well maintained. Any deficiencies that you find, report them so he doesn't have to worry about it and worry about a broke down truck. When we're all in this together. We all want to go home safe at the end of the day. So anything you report, one less thing he's got to worry about so thanks for helping keep our trucks clean and helping keep utah moving